as the anticipation builds up ahead of that big game tonight, will Gareth Southgate finally bury the memories of his Euro 96 penalty miss? Well, joining us is his former teammate and good friend Stuart Pearce, alongside Bianca Gascoigne, who has her own memories of the England team. Good morning to both of you. Thank you for being here today. So, Stuart, let's start off with you first of all. I mean, you know, it's this anticipation is almost the best bit, the lead up towards the game. Everybody's very excited. How, how are you feeling about it? Are you going into this feeling confident? Very confident. I think they're a real rounded group of players uh, with a, a very relaxed and calm manager. So, and the brand of football they've been playing has filled me with confidence. I, you know, I, I fully expect us to win tonight, but I think it's going to be a really tough game. Do other countries go on and on and on and on like we do about missed penalties? That Southgate missed penalty. Does it happen elsewhere? Is it just us that, that bleat on about something that happened in 1996? Phil, you're, no other country does. You're right. We bleat on about it like you'd never know. You know, I think there's so much pain and anticipation. What we want, I think, is the team to win these next two games, get a trophy, and all of a sudden, all of that bleating about penalties over the years will diminish, hopefully, and we can bask on our glory again for, a well, hopefully not another 50 years' wait, potentially. But we can't underestimate Denmark at all because here's a team that's been united for a cause, really, when we all saw the horrific what happened with Christian Eriksen. And so you sort of think, right, uh, you know, will that unite them enough tonight? Will that give them the edge? What do you think? I'm not sure it will give them the edge, but I've certainly seen an uplift in the togetherness with the country, with the fans, certainly the players as well. It's horrific what happened to, to Christian and obviously football come together, let alone the, the Danish nation. And I, th I think it's really given them an extra age. And when it's got calls to fight for, they're, they're in position. And I think certainly the, the Danes will win to the game tonight, quietly confident. They've got some very, very good players in their ranks. And uh, it will be some atmosphere at Wembley, that's for sure. And, um, and you say that this is a better side than the one you played with in, uh, in 96? I, I think that this is maybe a more rounded side. I, I personally think that the squad depth feel is is better than than it was in my time. Certainly, I think they've got more strength in depth, and you're allowed five substitutes. You can near enough change half the team, so the importance of that is vital. And we've seen it in Gareth's um, team selections. He's chopped and changed the odd player in different games, different formations. And I think this team are more rounded and capable of delivering performances no matter who plays. I think they've got a really good a good togetherness as a group looking from the outside as well. Well, they're a great team, but from the top, the man at the top, Gareth himself, has been incredible. And that kind of rumbles down throughout the rest of them, I think. And you've known him for, for a long time. You go way back. Why do you think he makes such a great manager? I think like all good leaders in any organisation, Holly, he's unselfish. You know, he, he puts the calls and the team and others before himself. And I think that shines through. He's got a good team of people around him as well. He's assembled a good team and he's very humble. You know, he doesn't think he knows all the answers. He's continually learning the job and getting better at the job and evolving. And... I think that the players enjoy playing for him. He's one of these people that, that you get drawn to because you know that he cares about you as an individual. And I think the players feel that and feel that warmth from him as much as his technical knowledge. So what does the, what's the job today uh, in the lead up to a match like this? What will he do? Um, I think the key, most of his planning and technical work would have been done. The key for any manager at this stage it is just to, to to understand the mood in the camp. If the camp needs settling down a little, little bit and calming down, you've got to read those little signs amongst the players. If they need to have a little bit of a lift and a G up just before the game or whatever. But Gareth is clever at that. He, he'll understand the mood of the camp. He's worked with these players over a number of years. This isn't just, just come together this summer, let's say. You know, bear in mind... Three years ago, we got to the semi-final of the World Cup. And prior to that, the younger England teams 
have been winning tournaments as well, under 17s and under 20 level. So there's a building process that has been in place to get us to where we are now. Um, we don't want it to go to penalties tonight because, I mean, you know, you have memories you'd rather forget. We know Gareth has memories he'd rather forget. Um, are they, do they sort of focus on those in training now? I mean, is there sort of been extensive penalties training in case that does come to that? Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, it, it was really ad hoc, Holly, when I was uh, playing and it was a volunteer basis to take a penalty. It, it's almost become an exact science now with preparation, uh, study of other players, study of the opposition, you name it. And the one thing Gareth will know is when, if we do go to penalties, I'll be supremely confident that even though the Danes have got a wonderful goalkeeper that's a good penalty stopper as well, I work with Casper at Manchester City, we're, we'll be in as good a place as any nation of the world in regard to our preparation of penalties. I, I've no doubt in my mind because of the thoroughness that and probably yeah. Gareth's experiences. Well, you're, uh, you're there tonight. Uh, what a place to be. What a moment. Uh, enjoy. Yes, have a great time. Thank you for talking Thank to you. us today. Thanks, Stuart. My pleasure. Have a good day. Thank you, mate. Bye. So, Bianca, Bianca Gascoigne is here now. Um, and, uh, I mean, you're a player yourself, aren't you? Yeah, I love playing. Absolutely. So, I'm a bit of a tomboy. As you can see, I've brought the team spirit here today. <laughs> I've got my lucky top on. The last few games, this is what I've been wearing. I've got my trainers. This is made from two yeah. England training tops. So, if I didn't wear it today, you know, there could be trouble ahead. Well, you know, so, I had to on. wear them. <laughs> you've, been, um, you've been watching the games with your dad. Yeah, um, which has been an absolute pleasure. I, yeah. I bet it has. But what's like to sort of sit and watch the game? Does he give commentary all the way through? Is he sort of going, oh, I, I would have done this? I think he actually have... just watches and absorbs and I, I think he's just really proud and it's great to see Southgate bring that, you know, team spirit. It's the yeah. team spirit that Southgate has brought back to the game, which is absolutely fantastic and it's just lovely to see. Has so. your dad said that as well? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he loves him, so yeah, he's been really proud of him. Um, so when you, we were 10 when you were watching your dad? Yeah, like just turning there. 10. And what was that, what was that like? It was just, it's a real experience because now I get to say to all of my friends, I'm like, yeah, I was there at the Euro 96. Yeah. I actually took my school friends there as well. I went to all of the games, but I didn't go to the England and Germany. So I remember the penalty. I was at home yeah. and I like threw my pillows at the telly. And, you know, at the time, this is what he was, like, I remembered him by. But now, I mean, what a massive turnaround. Comeback kids, story of the century. You know, we love an underdog. And he's just now the England's heartthrob, isn't he? Well, I think <laughs> this is the other thing. A lot of people are saying that. Um, what What's it like for a family member then? Like when your when your dad was going off to play, you know, obviously when the, when it's good, yeah, he would come home and it would be great, I imagine. Yeah. But when you know, like that moment in '96 penalties and it didn't go England's way that time, when they come home, when these footballers are coming home, how do they sort of immerse themselves back into yeah, reality? It's immense pressure, obviously. And whenever yeah. I remember my dad taking any penalties, I never used to be able to look. He used to always like put it in the back of the net, but I used to never be able to look. And I was like, ah. But yeah, it's, Im it's immense pressure for them. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, I can't, I can't even imagine it myself, to be honest. So. Well, after, uh, talk about timing, because after the 18 months that we've all had, yeah. we <clears throat> needed this so much. And you are seeing um, people saying this is, you know, save saved us, saved the country, yeah, saved our heads. We've needed it, haven't we? Yeah. We needed the nation to, you know, come together again. We needed the team spirit of the country and it's just fantastic. And come on, England, we can do it, can't we? I know. We can. I, well, well it's if, coming if home. Ever we Everyone says we can. Home. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> it's on paper, on paper, it's yeah. all right. <laughs>